So with the scalloping, you're kind of explaining how. Yeah. Took so some now oil. it's actually opening earlier. So it ah. opened like back in this range. That's a good, you know. I'd have to put a degree wheel on it. I can't remember the exact number, but now it's opening there, and then right here would be like a stock opening. So you can see it's already open a pretty large percentage where a factory rotor would just now starting to open the, the port timing. So yeah, yeah so instead of making like this, instead of making that bigger. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're limited on how much material you can along yeah. here, and that web supports the seal. Otherwise, it wouldn't need to be there. And a bridge would open up. non scalloped bridge port would probably open somewhere around this degree mark here. So that would be a bridge. This would be a scallop. So it's only from bridge to scallop, it's probably five or ten degrees. You could, this is more suitable though, right? This is much more suitable. Than, that's what it starts out as. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. Basically, you're raising right about that high. Um, the, that's the closing edge, and then on the opening edge, you bring it out uh, up to there, maximum you can go before the seal has any issues. Cool. So they're opening it earlier, closing it later. Yeah, gotcha. just like a larger camshaft. Yeah. Right, so piston engine. Uh, so, and additionally, you are gaining some extra flow volume. But the main thing is that how long it's flowing for. So it opens sooner, closes later, it gives you more time to get air into the engine. Cool. So this is one of many. So you do you do same thing here, right? Do a little bit of yep. porting. Yeah, fully ported. So these are both. These are all street ports. The most challenging part was this one. So this guy, which that up in front of Star Point, people check it out. This is a uh, primary port, and that's where this has been increased in size quite a bit. Stock would be right up here probably. So the runner has been extended down to Cosmo 20B spec was really tall and this port starts out probably about <laughs> oh, wow. that, that small so I've been working on it I'm gonna try to find a scrap iron and bandsaw it because I had this material underneath I don't want to break through yeah so I kind of kept it gradual on this slope right here just cool it run through there right and that's why you want yeah to cool it goes through there so if this breaks through then I'll be not good anymore uh, so I've just been taking my time doing it lightly kind of measuring with a little probe on the back side but I'm gonna hack one apart and see how far we can actually go. This is pretty pretty good. I mean it's only a slight bit more of a curve. We might not be able to get a whole lot more than that, but that's full secondary size. Yeah. Which is what we gotta do on the four rotor. Yeah. Uh, to try to get it all four rotors to flow as much. So as normally possible. this is like these these would go these have primary injectors so you made them bigger to flow yeah. to secondary size. Yeah. Because the rotor number one and rotor number two have giant secondaries from the two rotor, yeah. but then rotor two and three are stuck with just primary ports. So we're basically making them into secondary ports, all of them. Now, did, now this hasn't been... This is the yeah. center, this won't yeah. get any machining done to it. Yeah. Uh, what it looked like when it's done, machine work, this is the four rotor iron actually right here. So this is the gear that gets machined and put into it, that's the housing. So this is what makes this unique from two and three rotors. You have to machine yeah. the center. Yeah, you can see how it would start out with that blank hole there. And then it goes around the perimeter, machines it to exact tolerance, gets the locating uh, grooves put into it. There's little Allen heads that screw in here, and that's what keeps it from twisting. And then it all presses in, it has a snap ring, and then this presses in with an indexing keyway that locks onto that, and that snap rings in also. So. So this is just another one you have here? Yeah, this was like a, a early, I guess you could say kind of a spare. It's, it's, it's not 100% finished. It needs the snap ring machined in right here and the groove placed in it. But yeah, it's um, basically identical to what we're doing on here. And then exactly, you punch this out and there's a, a rod. little tube that goes in, feeds that hole right there. To the there feeds thing. the uh, bearing directly. And that's exactly how big your port used to be. Oh wow. And you can see the difference. Yeah. So yeah, it's a whole bunch of material to pull out. So this is why like people can't just, people think, oh I can just get like a long you know, E shaft and stack rotors together. Yeah. But you gotta do it's all, all I mean, this that. machine work and that's where the port already dumps the exhaust. This is a large, large uh, 
straight onto the exhaust port. We just kind of extend it down there. Yeah, you're actually lowering it and raising it in oh, both wow. directions. So hmm. again, opens lower earlier, closes a little later. But the machining on this one is pretty much done, like outporting wise. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty much ready to roll. I just got to clean it up, obviously, from it being inside Mazda. Mazda runs the engines on water, so they get yeah. the surface rust uh, that cleans off pretty easy. But, <laughs> but yeah, the lobes, just like the 20B, except on each end. The three rotor, which is that right there, is a 20B Mazda. And then you can see how similar the four rotor is to it. So, so it's just what, 20 B is a little taller? Yeah, 20 B they made real real thick because it has that fat intermediate plate. Yeah. So that gives it the extra distance, whereas the four rotor is a machine to take advantage of a much shorter length than the 20B. Hmm. But yeah, same exact method though. So, so is, 